revegetated area. <laughs> revegetated sounds like what you'd call someone once they've gone vegan, then went away from veganism, and then came back to it. <laughs> they've been revegetated. <laughs> All right, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another Ask Me Monday. My name is Derek from Simnet Nutrition. So I'm back here at Englishman River Falls. It's the same location as I filmed last week. And if you guys remember it, last week, I forgot the memory card in my drone and I was dying to get some amazing footage of the waterfall here and the river and the forest. So you guys know I had to come back this week to get it. And last week I went down river, this week I'm gonna go up river and it is absolutely beautiful. Crystal and I went on a hike there yesterday and it was so nice. But first, let's get that B-roll that drone footage, that opening montage going. beautiful here. I'm so happy that I get to share like this little slice of the world that I live in with you guys. So it feels good to be out here. Last week, if you guys remember, I opened up a little bit, showed a little bit of vulnerability and you guys were nothing but kind to me and had supporting comments and all of that. So I just want to thank you guys for that. And the reason why I'm like that is because for one, it helps to address your insecurities. Uh, it seems weird, but for some reason, just like bringing it up, makes you feel a little bit better about it, feel liberated, and then often you find out that it's not that big of a deal. People will tell you, what, I never even noticed that about you. Or, oh, don't worry, I had the same thing going on, or whatever it is. Just know that whatever's going on in your head, it always feels good to get it out there, to express it, to communicate it to others, even if it's just to one person, one loved one. And I also hope that it inspires you guys to feel better about your insecurities when I speak about mine, because I think so often we see these people that are on social media, myself, <laughs> but I see other people on social media living such perfect lives and you always wonder like doesn't anything ever go wrong don't they have a bad day don't they ever get a pimple so yeah I just want to thank you guys for always being so supportive so let's get started with these questions last week's was like 29 minutes long or something ridiculous it's not gonna be that long this week I actually have to go to a dinner later on today so I probably shouldn't have driven this far away from my home to do it but I was just dying to come back here it's so beautiful here and there's actually a random picnic bench like in the middle of this trail so I'm gonna put the camera down on it and answer a question or two all right, this is fun. It's like we're sitting down together, guys. <laughs> Hold my hand. <laughs> so this question I got from the comment section of the last video I put up where I was fixing the pull-up bar in my backyard because it broke. If you guys haven't seen that video yet, go and check it out. It is so funny. I think it's my funniest video to date. I watched it like three or four times yesterday and just kept laughing every single time I watched it. Anyways, Golden Eagle Aesthetics asks, why not use metal or a more rigid wood for the bar? Reasonable question. <laughs> So you guys know I always use bamboo for my pull-up bars. I've had, I think, four bamboo pull-up bars now. And the reason why I use bamboo is, one, because I'm a quirky mofo. <laughs> no, but the big reason is because I like the feel of it on my hands. So when I use metal, it gets super cold in the winter. In the summer, it gets really hot and sweaty as well. But mainly, like, when it's cold here, which it often is, even at night in the summer, it gets really cold, the pull-up bar is really cold and it's hard to grab when it's cold. I just don't like grabbing a cold pull-up bar. And then dowels, they break, they splinter, and bamboo is just like cheap and it feels really good. If you've ever gripped bamboo, there's something about it that just feels really amazing. Like your hands grip it really, really well. It just feels awesome. I don't know how to describe it. Another reason, if you use metal, then you have to like cut it to the exact length and then you have to get something to fasten it in on either side. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's just always been available, so I've always been able to get bamboo. It's always been really easy for me to make these bamboo pull-up bars. And no, they don't last forever. They last for about a season or two. The pieces of bamboo are maybe between 5 and $15, depending on where you get them and the quality of it. I don't know. I just really like it. It's a cool feature. It's kind of unique. And I do pull-ups on so many other bars that it's just nice to have a change. There's also like metal pull-up bars just a few minutes from my house out of school, so if I want to use a metal one and go buck, then I can use that. 
Bob Barker asks, what made you want to become a holistic nutritionist? So this is a good one, and I, I was thinking about it like all the way here, and I'm still thinking about it, and I don't really know. It is a whole bunch of things that kind of brought me to this path. And I think that's what's really neat about life, is if you stay in alignment, and you just continue to do what you love, what feels good, what is in alignment with your values, with your goals, with what you want in life, then I think you'll find yourself in like a perfectly fine place. If you find yourself always having to like struggle at a job, not wanting to go rip yourself out of bed to do it, you know, then it's probably not in alignment with you and you should probably look at other things to do. And that's what I did when I wasn't liking what I was doing, I would find a way to get out of it. And every single job that you have is always a stepping stone to something else. Even if it's not what you want to do, even if it's the only thing available at that time, it's guaranteed going to be a stepping stone to the next thing that you do. Anyways, I digress. I don't think I've ever used that word in a conversation before, but I used it today and I think it makes sense. <laughs> So I've had a lifetime of careers, so many jobs, everything from working at a skate shop, skate park host, cutting lawns, electrical work, door-to-door -door sales, skateboard instructor. I've done tons of marketing, tons of public relations. I've worked in a warehouse. I've been the head of marketing teams. I've done demos in grocery stores. I worked at a supplement shop. That's probably not even half of them. I've done so many things. And uh, I've always been a bit interested in health and in nutrition, but I've always been confused and just never really understood. So I got to a point in my life where I was like, I want to know the absolute truth. I don't want to just be hearing all these different things that are confusing me from all these different angles. I want to know the truth for myself. Beyond that, I'd had some family members that passed away from cancer, from other things that could be considered dietarily affected. So I think the moment I decided I wanted to be a nutritionist was when I was working at a demo. I was working, I was doing marketing and I was working at a demo and I was promoting something like some, I don't know, something that I know wasn't a health promoting product. I wish I could remember what it was now, but I can't. Anyways, and I'm sitting there trying to tell these people like the health benefits of this like crappy product and I knew it wasn't true and I didn't believe it myself even though I wasn't all that educated in like health and nutrition at the time. And it was at that point I kind of said, this is crap. I'm tired of pushing products that I don't believe in. I'm tired of, you know, promoting things that are making people sick, that are hurting the environment. I was just tired of promoting and reciting someone else's vision, someone else's goal, someone else's product. But beyond that, I saw people that were sick everywhere. Not just people, but myself. I wasn't doing well. My family members. I lost my dad to cancer when I was 16 years old. And then I looked into what type of nutritionist I wanted to be and I kind of realized that becoming a holistic nutritionist was sort of the shortest road, <laughs> but that wasn't the reason. It was because I didn't want to go to school for seven years to become a naturopath doctor just so I can tell people to eat fruits and vegetables because I really wanted to focus on the food. I didn't want to be prescribing medications or herbs and that type of stuff. There are people out there that can do it that are much better than me. I just wanted to motivate people to get healthier and I also didn't want to become a dietitian because they often work under the guidelines of the government and the the food pyramid or triangle or diamond or whatever the heck they've they've marketed as this year and I knew that holistic nutrition kind of had the loosest parameters around it but it would still give me a good education base to build upon no idea if that answer made sense it took me like 20 minutes to get it out <laughs> is the river loud I hope it's not too loud okay last question I'm gonna answer here and I'm gonna walk up river away from the waterfalls oh yeah this one MV vlogs I'm 13 and vegan what is another simple way to deal with hate so I don't know if I gave any ways to deal with hate, but let me tell you, 13 years old and vegan, you are years ahead of your time. Holy, 13 years old, dealing with hate, vegan. Just understand that you're years beyond your time. People your age are not caring so much about the environment. They're not caring about the animals. At least they're not, they might care about them, but they're not gonna make the connection. And they're definitely not gonna inconvenience themselves. For the most part, you're different, but they're not gonna inconvenience themselves in order to save an animal's life that's already been taken. You know what I mean? They just haven't got to that point in their head yet that they can see, if I don't buy this piece of pizza with cheese and meat on it, then they won't need to recreate that piece of pizza so there'll be less demand, there'll be one less piece of pizza made. But I think it's hard for kids to see that far in the future. They just think, this animal's already dead, I might as well eat it. And I know a lot of kids, they just want to fit in when they're young. I know for me, that's all I wanted to do. I wanted to fit in with everyone else. I wanted to stand out just enough that I could like, you know, not be a complete drone of everyone. But I didn't want to be that far outside of the circle that I was like a weirdo or different or anything like that. And I'm not calling you a weirdo. So dealing with the hate, I mean, you could ignore them, right? Uh, you could laugh with them, whatever sort of feels best at that time. 
but I think one way to deal with it is to educate people and maybe to ask questions. And if they do start saying something to you like, oh, like you can't have this, why, why not? Like the animal's already dead or whatever. Like ask them questions to try and understand where they're coming from. And then you might be able to answer those questions rather than just like trying to deflect their hate or put it back at them. Something like I told you before, well, I don't know if you've ever heard of supply and demand, but if I don't eat this piece of pizza now, then they're not gonna make one in its place and there's gonna be less demand for pizza and then they're not gonna have as much in the school and they might have other healthier options like the salad or the veggie burrito that I'm buying. Now you could always say something like, hey, I don't wanna harm animals, I wanna be good to my health, and I want to be good to the environment. Is that such a bad thing? You know, just something light and fun. Something that might make them feel a little dumb for asking the question or making judgments on you or whatever. But 13 years old, vegan, man, I've got faith in the next generation. You're doing awesome. Can you guys see the color of that water? I don't know if it's showing up on camera. But it's this beautiful, like greenish blue, so nice. Man, you can't walk like 20 feet in here without seeing something that's just like so amazing. Wow, this is a rad spot. I think if the water comes down a bit in the summer, this would be a really good swimming hole. But it's all like glacier fed water, so it's so cool. But maybe a little Wim Hof action. End of trail. Doesn't look like the end of the trail. Weird. Okay, so DC Clements asks, do you help people with personalized diets, exercises? Every person is different, but I'm about to switch to a vegan lifestyle so I could use all the help and information I can get. I get this question a lot. Do you still do one-on-one -on -one coaching? And no, I don't do one-on-one -on -one coaching anymore. I'm not doing consulting anymore because I just don't have the time. I tried to do it while my channel was growing and expanding. Why do I look purple? Hold on, I gotta fix the color on this. This is crazy. I'm not that purple. There, that's better. What's going on there? All right, so yeah, I'm not gonna spend long on this question. I just get this question all the time. So it was actually the reason I started my channel was to bring traffic and uh, you know people that needed the help towards my nutrition consulting services. But as many of you guys know, my channel started to grow and then I got too busy and I just couldn't dedicate the time I wanted to spend with each client. And I didn't have like, you know, a sort of generic plan that I would just give out to people or a couple of plans. I would do each one individually and it was very time consuming. So in the future, if I do, it'll have to be on a sort of bigger scale. But uh, yeah, I figured the way that I could best help the most amount of people was to continue to grow my YouTube channel, to get the message out there, to make vegan living, plant-based diet, being active, healthy, as easy and attainable and as desirable as it could possibly look, I guess. I just wanna help people get healthy and as many as I can and I wanna do it in a way that is fun and I found really quickly that I was much more motivated to do videos and to get out there and to create content than I was to sit in front of my computer and do personalized meal plans. So not right now, but I'm gonna to continue to try to give as much helpful content as I can on here and there's lots of sources, nutritionfacts.org. Read some books, read The China Study, read How Not to Die by Dr. Greger. Just do your research, read lots, get comfortable cooking, and everything's gonna be okay. It's not as complicated as you think. Take B12, but don't worry too much about it at first. Take vitamin D, don't worry too much about it at first. Everybody should be worried about these vitamins, not just vegans. So anyways, yeah, good luck with everything. I'll be here for you, and everyone else, all you guys. You, 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 you. <laughs> oh man, I have so many questions left. Okay, I'm not gonna answer all these. Couple good ones here. Joseph, 1NJ. So wait, Canadians use the English system? So here he's referring to um, measurements and calculations, like if we use metric or imperial. And I just want to answer this because I think it's, we live in a really unique place here in Canada because we're so influenced by our American neighbors to the south, which still use the <clears throat> outdated imperial measurement system and then um, but because we're like a British colony and all that sort of stuff and our British roots we use the metric system as well so we end up using both so if you look through like the cattle I don't know if it's like this anywhere else in the world but if you go to a grocery store or you look through their flyer you'll see stuff that's um, measured by you know pounds you'll find stuff that's measured per gram which is the metric system and then you even see stuff that is measured by ounces and it's crazy man it's we we have to deal with it all our fuel is in metric uh, we use kilometers we use kilometers an hour like when we speak with distance we do but then still in construction a lot of it is imperial you'd say like four by four or four and three quarter inches or whatever yeah we're all just all mixed up here <laughs> wow look at that tree oh my gosh it's just covered in moss 
That's so cool. I actually haven't flown the drone yet for the intro. I always do it at the end of my videos because I like to walk around and just kind of see what I want to film and get that idea beforehand. So uh, yeah, anyways, I'm super excited to film after I'm done this. So this next question comes from Lauren Boada. Do you ever use a microwave? How do you feel about microwaves for defrosting and pre-cooking or cooking food? So I don't have a microwave myself. I don't use one, but I don't totally shy away from them. If I'm at someone's house and they're like, do you mind if I heat this up in the microwave or whatever? I'm not gonna be like, no, no, no have to heat it up on the frying, <laughs> you have to heat it up on the stove. No, I wouldn't say that. They're super convenient. Sometimes I rent places that do have them and I always just forget about it because I've been without one for so long that I'm just used to heating stuff up on the stove top. It doesn't take that long or I'll just eat like cold food, <laughs> whatever. But Dr. Gregor actually has a video on this. I think he has a couple videos on it on nutritionfacts.org and basically what he says is, the biggest dangers that come from using a microwave are standing beside it when you're using it because of the microwaves that come out. But as far as it like changing your food, making your food harmful or radioactive or whatever, uh, it doesn't really work that way. And it's actually one of the most gentle ways to cook your food because it uses such a low temperature. I would still prefer to cook my food or to heat it up on the stovetop. I'm curious what you guys say about microwaves. Let me know down below in the comments. Always wanna know what you guys have to say. This trail is too cool. It just like meanders along the side of this river. I really hope the river hasn't been too loud for this whole video. I've been trying to speak loudly to like kind of go on top of the sound of it, but if it sounds a little bit fuzzy, that's why. Nature, sorry guys. Am I purple again? No, whoa. All right, I feel like this one's getting long. Two more questions. Do I wanna answer that one? No. Plumber Daniel asks, Derek, it's not optimal for health to use oils in cooking, but is it better than the alternative to cooking animal products the same way? So I think what the person's asking here is, would it be better to cook your food in oil, plant foods in oil, or to eat meat? So of course there's a few variables to this, like how much oil are you using? What kind of oil are you using? But generally, I would say it's still better to cook your food in oil oil than it is to eat animal foods. And the reason why I like this question is because it actually relates to the Mediterranean diet. And one of the reasons why olive oil has been touted as being such an amazing health food for longevity and all that is because in the Mediterranean diet, a lot of their calories from oils like olive oil. So when people look at that diet and they go, wow, they live longer, they have less heart disease, and they eat all this olive oil, it's really easy to kind of make the correlation that like olive oil is really good for your health. But it's just better for your health and for your heart than saturated and animal fats. I hope that makes sense. I'm not just making it up, go look it up. <laughs> Get away, noise. All the snow in the mountains is melting really quick right now because the sun's out and it's so warm. So yeah, the creeks are really high and noisy at this time of year. All right, one more question. One more, two more. I can't remember. Let's see if this is a good one. Okay, two more questions. This first one's really quick. Uh, Chameleon569, question for Monday. Derek, why don't you set up a Patreon account? I bet you would get a lot of additional financial support to run the channel. Guess what, guys? Link down below. No, I'm just kidding. I actually did have a Patreon account when I started doing YouTube because, uh, yeah, I was having trouble making... What the heck? Look at this mushroom. Wow. Wow, that is a weird looking mushroom. So I closed down that account uh, and I don't know, I just didn't feel that great about it at the time and now financially things are okay for me. I mean, we could always deal with more money so that would be nice but you know, you guys are really good at supporting me whenever I, you know, when I came out with my ebook, so many people purchased that and helped me so I'd rather do that, give you guys lots of free content and then maybe come out with like a 10 or $14 ebook, you know, a couple times a year that you guys can then purchase to support me and get something out of yourself. So I think it's like a win-win situation for everybody. So that's why I closed my Patreon account down down. Financially, things are okay. <laughs> I've never been a rich man. I live a pretty modest lifestyle. I've never been a very rich man, so I'm pretty happy with how things are going. I'm doing what I love, get to share the info with you guys. But uh, I appreciate that. It's a good recommendation, and it's nice to know that my followers, you know, are thinking of me and making sure that, you know, financially I'm doing okay. Man, I'm really getting into the thick of it here. Okay. I don't want to go that way. Getting weird vibes from up there. Weird vibes. It's all about the vibes. 2018's all about the vibes. Hashtag summer vibes. Hashtag Coachella vibes. Holy mushroom vibes. Whoa. Look at these ones. Wow, those are giant. You actually have to be really careful bending down like that in the forests up here, especially on Vancouver Island, because as you guys know, 
we have a lot of cougars here and and what happens is cougars attack when you turn your back on them and especially when you go down like that they just go Argh. all right so the next question i grabbed from the chat in the youtube live that i did a couple weeks ago um it was uh, for an ask me monday and it's from julian donker all this talk about nutrition is making me super stressed out. How do I go about to create a well-rounded, simple, and adequate meal plan? A website, perhaps? Yeah. See, this is what I don't want to happen. A lot of people ask really specific questions. Is it okay if I eat 20 minutes after my workout instead of 15? Is it okay if I don't eat for four hours after my workout? Derek, I work out in the evening and I can't have my smoothie at night because it'll keep me up all the sugars. I have to have something warm like rice and beans. Is it okay? Blah, blah, blah. So I know there's a lot to think about. Meal timing, how much fat to eat, you know, um, food combining, all these different things. Basically, what you have to do is find out how many calories you need and then take in that many calories worth of good whole foods that you like. So go to a website. I know that Mike the Vegan has an awesome website called, I'll put a link below, I believe it's plantspace.org. On there, he has a really good calculator where you can punch in like how much exercise you do and your height and your weight and all that sort of stuff. And it'll give you a number of how many calories you need for maintenance. And then if you're trying to gain weight or gain muscle or whatever, you probably wanna eat a couple hundred calories more than that. If you're trying to lose, you probably wanna eat a couple hundred calories less than that. And then you'd go to a website like Chronometer or MyFitnessPal or something and then track your food for a few days and kind of get an idea of how much you're eating if you need to eat more calories or less calories. That's really all there is to it. If you guys are getting enough calories, things like protein and fat and all that stuff don't really matter, especially when it's coming from whole foods. Don't be afraid to experiment things. I mean, if something's not working for you, change it up and do something else. Just because I love having smoothies and smoothie bowls after my workouts and I feel like I recover great from it, doesn't mean that you have to do it that exactly the same way. You might want to have oatmeal instead. You might want to have a smoothie with more fats in it than me. I don't know but figure out what works for you. You can only do it through trial and error, really. But uh, yeah, the calories is like the biggest one. Make sure you're getting enough because when I get messages from people that say that they've somehow um, not failed but not succeeded at a vegan diet, it's usually because they just aren't taking in enough calories, especially coming from the guys. They'll say, oh, my strength has dropped, I've lost size, my libido has dropped, I don't have as much energy, and almost all of that is because we haven't been eating enough calories because as you guys know, plant foods are so much more calorically sparse than meat, dairy, cheese, eggs, the animal foods. They're a lot more calorically dense, so we don't have to eat as much of those. Shouldn't be eating any of them. <laughs> but you have to eat a lot more plant foods to get the same amount of calories in. So hopefully that should help. Don't be discouraged. And like I said before, just get knowledgeable on the whole subject. You'll start to learn about B12. You'll start to learn about vitamin D. You'll start to learn about getting enough zinc and all that sort of stuff. Nutritionfacts.org is your friend and just watch lots of vegan YouTubers that are trustworthy like Mike the Vegan, like myself, like Happy Healthy Vegan, like Brian Turner, like John Venus, so many out there. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this Ask Me Monday. Definitely leave your comments in the questions. Wait, leave your questions in the comment section down below. Hopefully I can get to the nasty. Why is this bug flying right around here? Get out of here. Leave your questions in the comment section down below. Hopefully I'll be able to get to the next time. See you guys on another video. Get out of here, fly.